So remember last year when I said I switched to the iPhone 12 Pro Max? Yes, guys, you're reading the title properly. I did switch to the iPhone 12 Pro Max for two months. Well, I am now using the iPhone 13 Pro Max and welcome to my long-term use of this device. It's about six months or so. And don't worry guys, I still use my Android devices. I use both of them on a day-to-day -day basis. But this video is not just a you know, standard long-term review. I'm basically gonna be giving you uh, how I use this device on a day-to-day -day basis. So thank you for watching. Definitely hit subscribe channel. And this is Ikechuku Iguenu from Board at Work. So the iPhone 13 Pro Max, right? I have both colors of the devices. And I have to tell you, uh, it's a device that actually is very comfortable to use. I'm not a traditional iOS user, and it's something I've come to learn over the last, you know, couple of years and how easy it is to use an iOS device. And that is some of the thing that actually plays along the way. So I'll start off with one of the best benefits of having the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which you all know is the battery. Now, the reason why I like the battery is because when I, you know, start my day, I go see grab coffee in the morning or grab a quick lunch. Uh, my, I can use my battery from place to place and I still have some really good battery life on there. That is actually one of the best things is that you can wake up in the morning and go from say 9 a.m. to maybe about 11 at night and probably still have about 20% left on your device, which is a great and quite impressive compared to even my Galaxy S22 Ultra. I can't last that long using it uh, on a day, daily basis. So for me, that is very important and that is very key. So this allows me to do a lot of things. It allows me to go out and take photos and take videos, uh, especially when I'm going to this awesome barbecue spot, uh, by the way. If you're ever in Clifton, New Jersey, I just have to shout them out because they make some really great barbecues called um, All the Smoke. Definitely check it out though. The barbecue is really, really good. Oh man, it's impressive. Daniel was salivating. He was so hungry. He ate like, you know, two pounds of barbecue. Actually, I'm just joking. No, he didn't eat that much. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, being able to use my device there and capture content is great. Now, this is the second part of the iPhone that I really like are the cameras. I would say in terms of photos and images, the cameras from last year and the cameras from this year are very similar uh, in, in most respects. They do a really good job in photos. Uh, they do a really good job in capturing. HDR is really nice. Uh, the one part I'll say that hasn't really improved as much for me is uh, the portrait photos. They are great. Uh, but I think for me and my skin tone, there are certain things it doesn't capture as well. So I'll just put it that way. I do like them, but I think there are better cameras out there for that. Now, when it comes to video, this is where the iPhone basically holds the mantle. Like I, I can't deny it because a video quality on the iPhone is, is impeccable. Now, Daniel will tell you that when it comes to recording, me holding the camera, my hands can be a little bit shaky sometimes. You know, he calls it a little earthquake motion and having the kind of stability the iPhone brings is truly impressive because I can use it to capture content uh, anywhere I go. And also the cinematic video really comes out really well, even though it's a 1080p, but front, uh, the front facing camera as well as the rear look really nice. So it's something the iPhone does well that no other phone at this point in time that, that can compete at that level. So cameras are really good. Because I use the cameras quite a bit on the iPhone, there's something that I also use a lot. And that, of course, is... <laughs> I was gonna say Final Cut. <laughs> and that, of course, is iMovie. I know, right? You guys are like, <laughs> seriously, man? iMovie? Yes. Uh, I use iMovie a lot to edit my TikToks and my Reels. Yeah, you can see I have about 260 <laughs> different edits on here. And it's really impressive how simple and easy to use. This is probably my most used app on my iPhone uh, because it allows me to jump in, scroll through, scrub, cut, pin, edit, and just have something going and ready to move. I can also do voice recordings on there. Um, I can also add soundtracks if I want to. But again, it's an easy tool that allows me to quickly make my TikToks and my Reels. I don't have to use my Sony uh, camera, which is in front of me. I can literally just use my iPhone, either one of them, to capture content. And it is 
absolutely fantastic. Now, this allows me to use my other app, my social apps like TikTok as well, as, as well as also um, IG, because that's where I drop that kind of content. And that kind of productivity for me is great. Now, I can do the same thing on my Galaxy, but I have to use a third party app, right? I have to go and download something like CapCut, which does a really good job uh, for all the things I would like to do, but being able to do it directly from the device and not needing a third party app goes a long way to kind of setting the iPhone in a very peculiar position in terms of uh, true functionality. Now, the next part about the iPhone 30 Pro Max that I do like, and something that I actually have to admit, is the Apple ecosystem, right? Being able to use things like my iPhone 13 Pro Max, my Apple Watch Series 7, as well as also something called the Tempo Move to do my workouts at home. You're going, really, man? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something that Apple does really well. The ecosystem using all the devices together makes a whole lot of difference. So uh, for a while now, I've been using uh, the Tempo Move, which is a great um, kind of personal home gym, if you will. Now, you've got this cabinet that has um, all the weights there that go from uh, 1.25 pounds all the way to 10 pounds in terms of weights, uh, which you can actually stack up and use and it works with your iPhone. So you dock your iPhone into the Move and uh, it basically does 3D body scanning, allowing you to watch your movements while you're working out. So it counts your reps, it sees how low you're going down for squats, so you're actually doing your squats, your exercises properly, and it's a fun way to actually gauge that exercise. Plus, pairing that with my Apple Watch, where I can actually add time, of course, all my fitness tracking as well. So my daily fitness tracking, which I do on the Apple Watch, plus what I do on the Tempo Move itself, actually helps for a very great workout at home. Now, this is something that, yes, you can do with other devices, but if you think about it, it's very disconnected and it's very hard for you to get all that information together. So in this case, my iPhone is capturing me and seeing what I'm doing, and it's counting my reps and seeing my movements. It's making sure I'm working out well. Now, I can use any third-party smartwatch to actually do my tracking, but then is it giving me accurate reading? Is it fitting it properly as, say, the Apple Watch will do? That is something to do well. I can't deny that, and it was actually great to use that together with Tempo, and I found it to be a very great experience being able to wake up if I didn't have to go to the office or go to the gym or had to stay at home for whatever reason. Also, you know, we've had COVID for the last couple of years now, so it was easier to do workouts with this. And I think this is something that Apple really does well that a lot of people just can't do. So now that you know that I use my iPhone, my Apple Watch to work out with a personal trainer called Tempo that's available, uh, you know, anytime I want. Do I really love the iPhone? Can it do everything I imagine or are there some issues I have with the device? And yes, they are. Now, this goes back to something I've always had an issue with, is the fact that I cannot move my icons on my home screen anywhere I want. So I can't customize my home screen. I have to ha follow Apple's grid pattern. And that's something I just personally don't like. It means I can't show my wallpaper to its fullest. I have to make folders and do all these things that just to me makes no sense. So that's one. The other thing that I found quite interestingly with the iPhone 13 Pro Max is the fact that when I leave my Wi-Fi on and I leave my house or my, my office and I go outside, there's certain times where I would not have signal just because I have to turn off Wi-Fi. It's something that's constantly happened. I'm not exactly sure if it just doesn't switch from Wi-Fi easily. That's something that happens with the iPhone. So I always have to go in and turn off Wi-Fi for a little bit. And then I get my 5G signal and then I can continue using the device. So again, there are some issues here. And finally, for me, the biggest one um, is actually gaming. Now, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is a great gaming mobile device. And there are a lot of games in the Apple App Store, especially with Apple Arcade. A lot of fun games to play. There are a lot of games to play uh, in total. But if you're going to be playing a lot of graphically intensive games, and I'm talking about you guys who are Genshin Impact fans, you're going to find that the iPhone is a hot beast. Yes, this thing rises in temperatures up to almost like 117 degrees. And if you're just holding the phones in your hand, it is super hot. I will not recommend it. So you'd have to use a case. 
you know, like this leather case here or even the Spigen one. Uh, although I do hope Spigen make that gaming case for the iPhone because it's definitely needed. The Apple doesn't have any special cooling for their devices. So what you're going to have is you're going to see throttling with your gameplay experiences, which is why Genshin has some really bad um, benchmarks on the iPhone are much lower than what you would find even on the Galaxy. So for me, it's not something I would use to game constantly because of those issues. That being said though, it's been almost two years with me using the iPhone um, as a day-to-day -day device with my, of course, my Android device. And I have to say though, Apple has really impressed me with a lot of things. Uh, as I've mentioned in this video, the things they do really well that I think a lot of people like, and the ecosystem is something that is hard to beat. So would I recommend the iPhone 13 Pro Max to anyone who wants to pick it up? Yeah, if you like the iPhones, I mean, there's nothing wrong with you. I claim this to be the best iPhone to pick up simply because bigger is better. I mean, I'm sorry, the mini is just too small for me. This works and I think this is pretty solid. So. If you guys have any questions or any comments about the iPhone 13 Pro Max and what it's like to use it you know, in the last six months or my total usage for a year and a half, let me know. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your pork chops.